Okay, that's fine. Good I'll deal. Start do you want to? Do you want to? Yeah, you can do that. Do you want to check on Laura real quick? <laughs> Once you let them in. No, it wasn't outstanding or anything. Mike, how you doing? Good to see your face, man. You too. Got a couple other folks on here. Randy, when you get Laura, let me know and, and we'll get moving. How are you? Will do. Yep. Because I shared the document with you. I don't know if you said that prior to um, um, it's the guide to our document. So we can I'm just wondering if you have pieces there. Pieces there. Turn my ringer off on my phone. All right, gang, it's just a, a couple of minutes after two o'clock here. I am just waiting. Um, Laura got pulled into something here real quick. We're just going to hold off a quick second until she hops on. That should just be a quick second. So I'm um, going to do my best to respect everyone's time, um, but I want Laura McIntoon okay. to be on here. Uh, cause she's going to move pretty quick in the beginning of the, uh, of the presentation. Right. Mr. Percival, how are you? Wonderful. And you? I'm good, man. I got to connect with you on some of the stuff that we talked about the other day. Gotta... All good. <laughs> Randy, did you enjoy your stay at Issue High over the weekend? I did, Matt. It was a great time. Great good. people. Everybody was super helpful. Um, such a fun event for these kids. Good. Glad to hear it. Bill, it looks like she's jumped on here. Okay, I saw her come in on us, Susie, but oh, yeah. there she is. All right, Laura, how you doing? I'm you good, thanks. Okay, I just wanted to make sure your audio worked. All right, we're going to get rolling. Sweet. All right, well, first and foremost, I just want to say thanks uh, for making some time to be here. And uh, I don't necessarily know if it's congratulations uh, on, on getting towards the end of the school year or if it's a, a sigh and a, a deep breath or what it is, but I know that uh, everyone's happy to be here and expecting some better weather here soon. So uh, we're definitely excited. Uh, I was kind of looking through the roster of our uh, attendees here, and I believe I have had the pleasure of meeting everyone at least once here, if not multiple times and having to work through. So I'll spare everyone all the introduction things. Uh, I am Phil Archer, and um, and all of you and me have known each other in some capacity in the in the past. So uh, we also have Randy Hill here. Uh, Randy is the support staff that is assigned to the uh, Boys and Girls Lacrosse Tournament and is basically the brains and – oh, you want to let Matt in there? Uh, the brains and the organization behind everything that we're going to go through today and set you guys up for successful section tournaments. Uh, Randy, let's go ahead and move to the next slide, please. All right, so then also uh, we have Laura McIntoon that will be uh, presenting on um, some website pieces that you'll all need to know and, and feel comfortable with. Uh, we've also got Tim Layton that is going to uh, talk about on media 
and then uh, rounding out today, then I'll I'll hop into some section tournament management stuff. So um, to start things off, we're going to run through some review of the materials and documents that you've either been sent or you have access to. So Randy, let's go ahead and move here. Good deal. So using your tournament personnel um, dashboard, and you've got to be logged in to do this, you can go to your section tournament management resources, choose spring tournaments, and you'll see um, a section pop up for lacrosse. And when you're doing that, uh, you'll see different documents, all of which that are listed here, or categories of which that are listed here, uh, including today's agenda, um, PowerPoint, uh, rules and policies, the uh, any modifications that we have or any NFHS adjustments, uh, there will be some COVID resources and then emergency action plans, protocols, um, and then um, a little bit on the responsibility for spectator conduct that is um, in the rules and policies. So um, I, I would encourage you to get really familiar and get comfortable with the rules and policies, especially the end of game procedures, um, working through our fall tournaments with soccer, we had some very interesting situations uh, centered around overtime, ties, uh, and suspended games due to weather. So I would hop into that and get familiar with it so that you can be a, a credible, knowledgeable resource if it comes down to that. Um, on the COVID resources, there's it touches on this in um, uh, going through that process I mentioned on getting to your um, personnel dashboard, but there are also uh, several other COVID resources that are on the site on the top under the COVID tab. Um, and nothing's really changed there. We're still on the zero to five days of nothing. And then day six and beyond, as long as there's no fever and no symptoms, you start to work back in. Go ahead, Randy. So with that, um, that was kind of the initial materials documents that I wanted to run through. I'd like to pass it over to Laura real quick here to start to go through some of the aspects of the website for entering information to getting things set up in brackets. Laura? Thanks. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you will find resources that Phil and Randy talk about throughout this meeting and throughout preparing for your section tournament on your tournament personnel dashboard. If you do not yet have a tournament personnel dashboard, please in, email info at mshsl.org and we will get you set up with that. Many of you who are ADs that may only get to this once a year, a reminder that way down in the bottom of your web page, you will see down in that blue footer, the opportunity to toggle back and forth between your dashboards. So that is the way that you're going to move between your AD and your tournament personnel dashboard. If you are not new to being a tournament manager, but are new to lacrosse, your region secretary can connect you and get you into the right tournament so that you have the right accesses within that. A reminder that on that tournament personnel dashboard, Randy, if you wanna jump ahead, you do have a website help guide and behind that website help guide, you'll find a number of one pagers to talk you through different processes that we're asking you to do. Again, if you are an AD, that's a different help guide than you'll see on your AD page. It speaks specifically to tournament personnel tasks. The next slide, on your tournament personnel <laughs> dashboard, you'll find a chunk of buttons that look like this. Behind the one that says Spring Tournament Management Documents, you're going to find a lacrosse folder. That lacrosse folder is your go-to for all of your section management items. That folder is filled by Randy and Phil out of our office and a few others with things that will help you successfully run that section tournament. Again, these are documents that are for you as a section manager. They are not AD things, they are not coach things, they are there for you to run your tournament. So it's very important that you find that spot. Another resource that you have on your dashboard are two directories. You have a school directory and a coach directory. That is your spot to find contacts for those at the schools that you're working with. Excuse me. And finally, I'm walking through three tasks that we're going to ask you to do as you prepare for your section tournament. And these are great slides to come back to with some directions. These will be put in that section tournament. 
folder, but you'll also find these directions in that website help guide. First, making sure that the date and venue for your section event are accurate. Randy, if you want to jump ahead to slide nine, please. It is very likely that your region secretary may have already done this. They have access to do this about a year previous and often have this information in. But please check to make sure that that is accurate with dates and venues. That shows to the public, that shows to coaches, that shows to ADs, and it's their general way to know when and where your tournament's going to be held. The second piece that we ask you to do is upload resources for coaches and ADs who will take part in your tournament. On coach and AD dashboards and on your tournament personnel dashboard, you find those blue bands that have the specific sports that people are participating in. Behind that, that middle section says section tournament resources. As coaches and ADs are becoming more familiar with their dashboards and they are not finding information for section tournaments, they are asking where that information is. And again, this is information that, you know, 15 years ago, you dropped in an envelope to the mail, in the mail to them. 10 years ago, you put it in email. And as we all know right now, our emails are more than full and being able to find the right information is important. So those resources that you would have specifically for your teams participating, this is your spot to upload that for those coaches and ADs to find. And then finally, your brackets. Brackets belong to region secretaries, and they then assign those out to others who will manage those. So please work with your region secretary to determine if he or she is managing those brackets or if that's a piece that you're going to do. Again, different regions, different sections want to manage that a little bit differently, but it's critical that you get that information in there and update it as quickly as you can following each contest. Again, we've got people who are looking for these and looking to see how your contests are going, and we want to provide them that information. With that, I believe I'm going to turn it over to Tim Layton, who's going to talk about media coverage at section events. Very good. Thank you, Lauren, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you so much for your service as a uh, section administrator. Uh, the league is, is grateful to you for doing that. The section tournament management, as many of you know, models what is seen at the state tournament level. And with this experienced crew that we have of, of administrators here, many of the things that you see on this slide are gonna be really familiar to you. And they're covered under our resources here at the league. Now, a couple of things I'd like to share. Uh, the, High School League is going to host a media forum on Wednesday, May 17th, and a lot of the information that we share here today with you is also going to be shared with our media so that they are well-educated ahead of time, so that they are uh, making the be uh, best decisions in terms of coverage. They're also being professional in the way that they communicate with you, announcing their on-site presence. So those are the things that we share with them. The Guidelines here are also things that, uh, if there are any questions or concerns, you can certainly let me know. A couple of the things I'd like to share, though, the approved media list that is on the high school league's website, that's a key tool for you as an administrator. If you have a request from somebody and shares that they are requesting press box access uh, to cover a game uh, that you're administering, you have the ability to reach out to uh, via that approved media list to see if they have been vetted and approved by the Minnesota State High School League to be on site. If they are not, please feel free to drop me a line and I'm happy to visit with you about that or to help you in that vetting process. A couple of the other things that you'll wanna think about in preparation for your management is determining media accommodations. Uh, take a look at your press boxes. Do you have the ability to provide table space? for a media member, or will they have to do their coverage from outside the press box because you are just too plump full with game personnel. Another thing to think about are photo zones. Be thinking about where the media can shoot 
on the field, uh, shoot their photography so that they're not interfering with the play, not interfering with the team, uh, but also providing them access. So think about photo zones and where you would want them uh, to be. And then finally, the post-game interview process. We also would like you to determine where is a place that uh, media members can interview the participants and or coaches afterwards. So these are some things to think about as you as you prepare for for administration of these events any questions or concerns please feel free to reach out to me and i'm happy to help uh, guide you through this process and uh, i will stay through the end of this meeting uh, in case any questions or concerns come up with that again i thank you uh, for being an administrator and i pass it back to phil thanks everyone awesome Thanks a lot, Tim. I appreciate that. Appreciate you and Laura being here um, as resources for our <clears throat> for our tournaments here. So let's jump right into our tournament management. So uh, first thing we've got here is is management and chain of communication. Um, long and the short of it, long and the short of it is this: if there's any problems or anything pops up in the section tournament, your region secretary needs to know. So I'm here to assist and help, but everything should flow through a chain of communication that goes through that region secretary so that local issues can be handled about the people on the ground there and that communication can happen uh, through the leadership in that way. So um, let's see here, prior to seating, you wanna confirm that all teams assigned to your section are actually uh, planning on, on participating or are allowed to participate. The last thing you wanna do is go through the seating process uh, with a team that is not allowed or is not going to participate. Um, and then the uh, the assigning of site managers for all the sites. This is some pretty self-explanatory stuff, but um, preferably not a member of a coaching staff for an event, and um, point them to a to their dashboard for their resources. All right. Um, this slide for me is all about communicating, uh, making sure that we've got the right people's information to communicate if we need something or that they've got the right information um, to reach out and contact the person if they're in need. So uh, confirming you have the, the proper information inputted in there, um, tournament managers being familiar with rules and policies in case there are any questions or any um, any needs on, on uh, like I said earlier, like an overtime or a, um, or a situation with eligibility, um, and then providing contact information for all site managers. So again, overall, just over a, a broad overview of this slide is making sure that everyone is communicated and has the ability to communicate if there's ever a need. Where are your resources? Who are your resources? Uh, make sure that all that is up to speed. All right, and then talking about a little bit more going further on the communication piece is ensuring that brackets are updated uh, immediately following a game, making sure that the right people are in the loop and getting things done as soon as possible. So whoever that region secretary is given access to to, um, to import or update brackets, let's go ahead and make sure that that is knocked out. And then on the on the on continuing on the vein of communication, preventing and reporting ejections. So um, we need to know this information as soon as possible. And uh, we don't wanna wait for an official's report to come through, let's say. So uh, when you start to think about all the ins and the outs of, of bylaw 206 and how it applies and the differences in postseason play. So if any of those can be reported to the um, tournament manager ASAP and get that over to Randy so that we can deal with it accordingly, um, that would be huge for us to be able to get in front of those types of things. So the officials will complete a incident report form, but having that information early and often allows us to deal with anything uh, that might pop up centered around that. Okay, so the consistency in communication aspect here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of just run through these real quick, and then I'm gonna hop into some more depth as to why uh, this slide is called consistency in communication. And essentially, it's between section tournament, regular season section tournament, and state tournament. So um, provide site managers with the following information. So today's agendas, the notes, the PowerPoint, uh, the the MSHSL section documents that are in the dashboard, uh, NFHS rule books, and then um the uh i don't know why we have that on there i apologize the officials must complete the mshsl incident report forms uh in the event that uh there is an ejection but this is more for 
um, for consistency here between our section and state tournaments. Randy, let's go ahead and jump to the next slide real quick so I can dive into this a little bit more. So on our continued slide here, um, as stated earlier, in the, earlier uh, making sure everyone is up to speed with the rules and policies, especially um, the game ending procedures uh, centered around weather and um, overtime. Um, and then diving into why I'm really big on the consistency aspect is uh, working with our coaches and our our teams with the official squad um, and working through our pass gate. So we both we all know that the better things are introduced and adopted and enforced during our section tournaments, the better they'll flow during the state tournaments as well. And so when we're talking about um, our official squad is uh, holding our teams that are participating in our section tournaments to that 24 players, three coaches and two student managers. Um, that aren't players um, to the sideline and any pass gate entries that you might have. Go ahead, Randy. So diving into this a little bit more on the coaches aspect, you have three coaches that are allowed to be on the bench. Um, and that means that they've completed their CERs and are legally approved to coach. Um, and then I'll give you um, just a, 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 I guess a tidbit from how things will work at the state tournament is if there are more than three coaches on a coaching staff, um, they, that fourth coach, fifth coach plus are not allowed to come in through the pass gate. Um, they'll purchase a ticket and come into the, to the venue through um, the regular spectator entrance. Uh, but they would be allowed to, and this is how it's been done in the past, they would be allowed to to be with the team during halftime or during the warm-up time. But once the competition starts, they will not be allowed on the field. They have to be in the stands with the spectators. So um, that's that's how it, it has happened at the state tournament. I know everyone's section venues are a little bit different. It might be a little more challenging to, to try and get something like that done. But I wanted to give you guys how that was going to run in the state tournament so that you can model off of that, um, kind of going back to that consistency aspect. Um, now, last bullet point here is once the game roster has been set and that first game of the section tournament has started, that is their official roster. Um, just a note there. Randy, let's move into the next slide. All right, so then going, stepping further down into what that official roster looks like, 24 players, two managers that aren't players, as, as we mentioned before, and we talked earlier about bylaw six, uh, excuse me, 206, um, in situations where we'll have like an ineligible player during the tournament or um, anything like that. Uh, an ineligible player who becomes eligible during the tournament must be placed on the roster beforehand. So he would count, he or she would count as one of your 24. Now here's an example. So a student serves a one or more game suspension for a chemical violation. Um, they have to be one of those 24 players on the initial roster um, and if they're ineligible, they'll be scratched for, let's use the example, that first game. So there's 23 players that are eligible and able to perform in that first contest, and that 24th spot is by that player that is not eligible for that first round. So that's the scratch. So that student uh, postseason cannot be in uniform or on the bench uh, if he or she is ineligible. So just note that. All right. So a little bit different here on um, the injured player or a COVID positive athlete that has to be medical cleared beforehand. Um, an injured or COVID kid that will join the team after the first game will need to be on that initial 24 person roster. Um, very similar to the ineligible situation um, and, and that was discussed earlier until they are cleared. Um, an injured athlete, that is on the 24 person roster and then is injured during the section tournament and then is subbed off. Uh, there's two really big things I think just need to be touched on that. If they're subbed off and they're gonna be able to come back in and make a return before the end of the tournament, which in some cases does happen, they would have to, re they would have to go in and be placed back in that 24 person roster and remove the person that came and substituted them. I think um, everyone on this call has kind of experienced or gone through that before. If they if they are subbed in for someone, they've got to come back in for the person that got them. And then the second point of emphasis around an injured player is that they must provide written medical clearance um, to the tournament manager before that can that can happen. Go ahead, Randy. 
All right. So going back to this, uh, kind of wrapping things up here, um, medical protocols. So share and review the medical documents and the emergency action plans with the staff, with, with all staff. Um, and one thing that I did miss and I marked to come back to it here was in, in um, those spring tournament resources that are on your personnel dashboard, there is an emergency action plan worksheet along with several other documents that you can use as resources and should be sharing out with the workers and the personnel that you've got there. They'll give you a good base to work from. So make sure that everyone's in the loop on that. Um, your tournament staff will have final say over a school or a team staff on how to handle the situation. Um, and basically, I just put a note in here that says, the better that everyone works together and is in communication, the better chance of navigating a potentially negative situation and having success with it. So um, so I would leave that at that for that. Um, and then lastly, kind of in the general information, what I'll, what I'll touch on here is, um, and I've mentioned a couple of times already, but just getting very comfortable with those uh, end of game procedures, uh, mentioned overtime and weather postponements and all those things. There's, there's two documents in that spring dashboard that's, or excuse me, the spring personnel dashboard, um, that's underneath lacrosse. And there's a, there's a, two separate documents, one for boys lacrosse, one for girls lacrosse that addresses the, the, um, suspended games for regular and postseason. And so these will actually be the first two documents in that dashboard. Uh, and I'd recommend having those and having people that are working with you have access to those. So you got everyone in the know on that. Okay, let's go to the last one there, Randy. All right, and so here's some dates for planning as well. Um, so section, section champion state qualifying schools, uh, all the information will be sent out electronically. We will be doing electronic ticketing uh, for our both of our state tournament sites, which are Stillwater and White Bear Lake High School. Um, we will do a state qualifier Zoom meeting on Saturday, June 10th at 10 a.m. So that means with the 10 a.m. meeting, the, the seating rankings are going to be due on Friday by 2, and the official squad tournament admittance form will be due Sunday June 11th by 8 a.m. So um, with that, we've got several documents and checklists that are in and have been, have been, you've been given access to. If there's any questions or if there is any um, uh, information that you wanna share here, while I've got Jim Muckenhern on here as well, our tournament manager, Tim Layton with media and Laura uh, and Randy with the website. Is there any questions that anyone has? on any of the information that we shared over the last 30 minutes. Phil, we also have one. Matt and Julie on too for officials, supervisor of officials. So if there's awesome. some questions with them as well. Thanks Randy, yep. I appreciate that. Sorry, yep, Matt, I Julie. Have, yep, Julie Carlson here, Girls Lacrosse Assigner. I do, can you hear me okay? I'm, we got you, you, Julie. Okay, good. Hey, um, I just want, I sent out a message off to um, the section leaders and uh, the payers just want to make sure you saw that um, just in terms, if you can follow the same dates as you did last year, that worked out perfectly on the girls' side here. You know, of course, the first couple rounds, I may need to ask for a uh, earlier time frame, you know, so if I run short of officials, I can uh, move them from earlier to later games. But if you can kind of follow the same dates as you did last year, that, that'd be great. Matt, I don't know if you feel the same way or not. Pretty much it worked out last year fairly well. So I think uh, um, I also reached out to most of the section tournament managers just to verify what dates they were thinking. And if if any pop up to look particularly problematic, we can either you know move to a move to a different date or do that early late kind of thing so we can uh, double up on games with officials. Yeah, and if you can, if all the section leaders can send their dates to me, that'd be great unless it's already listed on the MSHSL website, let me know. Thanks, Thank Julie. You. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. No problem. Randy, could you jump us up to, to slide three real quick? There's one other point that I wanted to, to touch on and I skipped over on accident here. Um, responsibility for spectator conduct. So make sure that you're talking with your with ADs and admin reps um, and to make sure that we've got some people present. 
Um, there's there are some details in the rules and policies on that that you can use or share with a with um, any of your the members within the section that are participating with you. Um, but with with events management and security and all those things being a top concern, especially in the last handful of years uh, with our events, um, regular season section and state, um, please make sure that you're utilizing schools admin. Um, and, and holding them responsible to come and kind of hold their end of the stick up to make sure that we're creating an environment that's going to be um, accommodating and successful for a good sportsmanship environment and a good place for people to be at. And so uh, definitely tap into that. I wanted to spend just a second to, to, to remind all of you to, to utilize those resources there. You want to pop back down to 22, please? My apologies on missing that, gang. Um, any other questions or anything while we have the, the brunt of the crew here? Yeah, I have one quick question, Phil. Yep, go ahead, Brian. Remind me again in, in something you said kind of caught my attention. Remind me again of who is responsible for ensuring that the coaches on the sidelines uh, are indeed in good standing with regards to CERs and whatnot. So. So I can tell you that for the for state tournament, um, I have our staff doing that here. For the section tournament, I do not. And so um, I would actually have to ask Laura um, how that was done was done in the past. Uh, Jim Jim Muckenhern, do you have anything on that? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, I um, I wasn't part of that. Okay, sweet. What I'll what I'll do then is. I will get with Rich Matter, Brian, and I'll get a note, and I can send that out um, or connect with Randy and have her send it out because she's got the mailing list for all of you and, and double-check to see if, if you guys are having, having um, to confirm that, which I, I do believe you do, um, and I'm okay. not sure how that's been handled at the section level, but, um, but I'll double-check to make sure there's not something else in place before I, I uh, send more work on you. Hey, and Phil, right, so just from the – from the past, Brian, like because we don't have access to you know those people, but we just use that form kind of Phil, you referenced it kind of that admittance form or pass list, and then just Roster. have the AD of that school confirm that their people are legit. I mean, we're trusting our ADs to to confirm that is how we've done it in the past anyway. And that was my thought. I just wanted to. I wasn't sure if there was anything new or anything different. Um, I trust most of the ADs in my region at least. So <laughs> most of them. Uh -huh. All right. One good more. question. Thanks. One more. That. One more media note to share as we're visiting here. Uh, I'm I'm very uh, very respectful of of the meet the um, the section managers here, and at our media forum, we were we plan on communicating with our media that these facilities are going to be open just a finite amount of time after the conclusion of the final game. Uh, many of these media members have been known to linger. Uh, quite a while, and and we want we will share with them that each site administrator will be determining when media need to vacate uh, the premises. And so that's another an important thing that either you communicate to them or they or we will instruct them to ask you. Uh, we know the long days and the arduous hours that you put in, and and we want to make sure that these folks aren't, aren't hanging out there forever. So uh, typically uh, it's anywhere from a half hour to maybe an hour afterward, but you have the ability to set that time frame at the conclusion of each game. Thank you. Just can I add, add one thing on the media? Um, at the state tournament, we tell them they cannot be in the bench area and that there has to be a buffer from the sidelines. And it's usually that's the conversation I have somebody new coming from a, a section someplace or a school someplace is they're right up on the sideline and in the bench area and we chase them out at the state. So if we can be consistent with that at the section level, that would be awesome. And we're actually going to be talking with our media advisory committee on, on Wednesday, May 10th, about the placement of photographers on the opposite side of the field uh, so that they would not intrude in those team boxes. Perfect. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Tim. That's actually another segue for me. Just toss another reminder on on 
you know, only having the official squad on the bench. Um, again, another thing, if we can continue to maintain some consistency between what we're doing with the official squad, what we're doing with the pass gate, what we're doing with the media, um, it makes it a little bit more predictable and easier for our, our teams to follow the rules and, and have a good experience. And it's, it's uh, one less thing for uh, myself or Randy to go over to a team and kick a coach out or kick him up to the stands. You guys know what I mean? And so the more consistent that we can be, the better there. So, uh, Jim, I appreciate you, you tossing that out there. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns, anything that's on anyone's radar that we can address while the bulk of the crew is here? Randy, anything? All right, that's a, that's a negative there. All right, well, let me just take a quick second and, and thank all of you again for your commitment to, to um, running the sections and getting these things going. Um, it's great to see many of you. Some of you I haven't seen in a little while, and it's just kind of awesome to, to see it. So I won't. I won't uh, take up any more of your time, but I definitely want to make sure that you guys know that we um, appreciate your work. Uh, there's a ton of gratitude coming towards you. And if there's anything that we can do, uh, whatever it is, and it might not be something that falls directly, um, you know, in my wheelhouse with lacrosse. It might be something I might go, go and ask uh, Matt or Julie on, or I might have to go and talk to Jason Nickleby or Tim Layton on. But if you have something, my contact information is right there. Randy's contact information is right there. Do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, we'll be at most of your tournaments in some capacity. One of us will be somewhere around some of those games that you guys uh, have have going on. So we're we're excited to help out and want to be here and available. So uh, with that, if there's anything, don't hesitate to reach out. And we're excited to work with you. And thank you again. And have a great afternoon. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks Great to all. see you all. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Randy. Jim. Hey, Phil. John Janke here. How are you?